Uh, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance is to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'm, the, uh, I'm your moderator for tonight. I'm Paul Gillis. And uh, if you will turn to page two in the book, you will see the uh, school district warnings uh, for articles six and seven. Only we, we're not voting tonight, we're just talking and asking questions. Um, I was just telling uh, uh, Chris that I just received word from the court that the uh, lawsuit is probably dead on arrival and that there won't be an overturning that. So it's more than likely this is the last pre-hearing meeting of the school district. Uh, but you never know. Things could change. The court did rule this afternoon to deny the injunction. So Article 6, now uh, before we start, some of you are not residents of the town. Raise your hand. Who will object to them talking when it's time without going through any folder all? No one? Then welcome. But if you, when you do go to talk, folder all, yes, what I do for a living. Um, <laughs> However, even if you are a resident, uh, if you're going to speak, I'd like to have you introduce yourself so that we have a sense of it. And if you are a non-resident, you don't have to be embarrassed about it, but you have to tell us so that we keep an idea as to how to balance your statements against uh, our, our thinking. So Article 6 is, uh, is the election of school directors, and we are electing one school director for a for one year of a two-year term, who is a candidate for that, or is there anyone here who is a candidate for that, and will uh, want to acknowledge that? Uh, no. All right. And then we have a school director for two years of a three-year term. Is there anyone here who is a candidate for that? Is anyone here who would like to be a candidate for that? <laughs> you could have a write-in, and or two school directors for a three-year term. Anyone? Well, that's discouraging. <coughs> and then Article 7 is the school district budget. Uh, shall the voters of the school district approve the school board to expend $3,630,287, which is the amount the school board has determined to be necessary for the ensuing, ensuing fiscal year? It's estimated that this proposed budget if approved, will result in education spending of $17,637 per equalized pupil. This projected sp uh, spending per equalized pupil is 4.41% higher than spending for the current year. Um, is there anyone, first of all, who will answer questions on this? Uh, <coughs> I we will be making a center. And uh, so who has questions about this budget? I, mean, I would have a question, which is, is, is this a budget that will make any difference if the court holds, upholds its decision? So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Chris Winters. I'm the, the school board chair until tomorrow, I guess. Um, the news of the, of the lawsuit and of the, uh, the judge ruling against a stay or a preliminary injunction was news to me as Paul came in here and, and sat down next to me and, and let me know. Um, that's one of the reasons that we thought it was prudent to go forward with a town budget tomorrow was because we thought either the lawsuit could halt the merger um, or there's also uh, the possibility that the legislature does something to halt the merger and then we would be without a budget. Um, so we felt it prudent to, to, as your school board, to go ahead and, and warn this budget. But in our conversations with um, the central office that prepares this budget for us to um, massage into what we want and then um, propose it to the voters, this budget would simply be rolled up should we merge. We'll simply be rolled up with the other four towns in the U32 budget. Um, so. The outcome of the lawsuit really would have no effect on this budget. This is the budget we're proposing. We looked at this as a budget that we felt that the uh, residents of the town of Berlin could support and should support, and we hope you support. Um, and so it's not going to change depending on the lawsuit. 
Well, if the merger goes through, will this budget be <coughs> our portion of the unified school district budget? If, if the merger goes through, you will see one budget. And so this would be our portion. The other towns have are building their budgets as we speak as well. Um, some of them are putting them before the voters. Some of them are not. But the budgets as built and approved by the local school boards right now, I believe, are just going to be rolled up into one budget. There won't be any shifting around based on merger or not. That could come next year if we're one board, one budget. We're going to look at things, I think, a little bit differently. We're going to look at them as a group rather than as individual local boards, which is going to be very interesting. Uh, but this year, it's still the same process that it has been in past years. And uh, our portion is going to just be you know, what it is, a portion of the overall one budget. Any other questions? Oh, Mike Strides for Mike. Junction Road in Berlin. Um, first of all, commend the board for putting together this budget as a contingency. I think it was the smart thing to do, not knowing the outcome of what was coming. Uh, but my, my question is, uh, therefore, when we vote on this tomorrow, uh, it, assuming the merger is going forward, whether the budget passes or fails becomes immaterial. Is that correct? That it, this, it could this will be. be the budget that goes forward even if we vote it down. I think the only other thing that could happen is the House has passed the, the House has passed a bill to delay merger for one year. It's not overturning Act 46. It's not saying we, we aren't going to merge, but to delay merger for one year. The Senate is going to take that up, or maybe already has started to take that up. If the Senate approves it, and if the governor doesn't veto it, that means we get uh, one year to prepare for merger, an extra year to prepare for merger. So I think it's still important that we have this budget and vote on it. It's possible that it is going to be a moot point and that we'll see a unified budget proposed in a couple of months. Now that we'll have to go ahead with the organizational meeting, the election of the new board, and that new board has to put forward a budget for the merged district. So we'll, we're likely going to see another budget to vote on in the coming months that would replace this one. Although these numbers, I think, are going to be the same thing that you'll see as part of the unified budget. Any other questions about the budget or the process or the school district's future? I do have a YouTube video PowerPoint that's 12 minutes long. I, I'm not going to force it on anyone if you don't want to watch it. It's, uh, it explains what's in the budget. It tells you the percentages. It tells you the dollar, the, the dollar figures. Yes, no, uh, maybe. We're going to be doing yes. it tomorrow? Please. Yes. 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 Every I, tried to watch it, I tried to watch it with a link and I couldn't get there. Okay. I think it's, we can, we can suffer through it All for right. 12 well, minutes. Cue it up. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. You're welcome. <clears throat> Hello everyone, thanks for taking a moment of your time to view this Berlin Elementary School proposed budget for 2019 and 2020. My name is Chris Winters, I'm chair of the Berlin Elementary Board. And Tuesday, March 5th, is town meeting day, so we hope that you'll come out and vote on your local Berlin Elementary School budget between 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. at the school. There is going to be a public hearing on this budget at Berlin Elementary the night before on Monday, March 4th at 6 p.m. With this Berlin Elementary budget and the estimated budget for U32, here's the bottom line for our taxes we are going to see a net 2.67 increase in spending over last year's budget 
And when that's combined with a decreased tax impact from the U32 budget, we'll see a projected education tax increase of 0.003 cents or $3 for each $100,000 of assessed property value. Before we begin this budget presentation, I just wanted to say that this is a really unusual year for our Berlin School District. We're operating under the assumption that we will be merged due to a state order and that a consolidated budget will be proposed to all voters of the five towns in a few months, and it's possible that this budget and vote will be replaced by that merged budget. But until then, we as a board believe we have a duty to present the Berlin voters with a local budget because there is a lawsuit and pending legislation that might halt the merger. We felt we needed to go forward as an independent school board as we currently exist and prepare for both tracks. The budget of the merged boards would most likely be the very same budget but it would just be rolled up as one of five, six counting U32 budgets for a vote of the entire district. Your school board asked for a level service budget this year, maintaining the same level of educational services as the previous year. And we're now asking you to approve that budget that includes, as I said, a net 2.67 increase in spending over last year. I'll talk a little bit here about the budgeting process, the components of the 2019-2020 budget, and the tax impacts, which include four factors, including our local budgets, the state tax rate, the property yield, and the common level of appraisal. These are some of the competing pressures when we're determining our budget for the elementary school. There are curriculum decisions, contracts, economic pressures, required student services, educational quality, political pressure, revenue projections, federal mandates and benefits, tax burdens, and test scores. These are all some of the things that we take into account when we're developing our budget. In developing our budget, we first got a draft from the principal superintendent and business administrator with staff input. We reviewed multiple budget drafts and gave feedback on what we wanted to see included or not included in the budget. We had multiple meetings in open session at our regular school board meeting to discuss the budget and solicited community input. Eventually we came up with a budget that we all approved and now we move that forward to you, the voters, in hopes of your approval. The proposed budget we have this year is a total of $3,630,287. That's an expense change of 3.4% over last year. With increased funding due to special education, the net impact on taxes is an increase of 2.67% over last year. Our proposed education spending per equalized pupil is $17,633. Last year, it was $16,892. That equalized spending change is 4.39% higher than the current year. You'll see on your ballot when you come out to vote the number 4.41% higher than last year's equalized spending per pupil. Those calculations are changing all of the time, and this slideshow is based on the most recent information we have from the Agency of Education. But again, that's not 4.41% increase in spending, it's spending per equalized pupil. Our actual expense change is a net impact of 2.67 increase in spending over last year. These charts show you a little bit more about how we spend our money at Berlin Elementary School. As you can see, a large part of it is direct instruction of students in special education. You can see other categories here around operation of the building, the assessments from central office, and administrative costs. 
you can see on this slide some of the budget change highlights. We have salary increases and benefit changes from negoti negotiated teacher contracts. We have staffing changes also contributing to an increase in expenses due to some teachers coming, some teachers going, and depending on the experience of those teachers that we've hired. The total for those negotiated items in salary increases, benefits, and staffing is $122,548. That's 3.49% of the budget. And it's really most of the increase that we're talking about over expenses from last year. As far as non-salary items go, we've actually cut spending just a little bit at $3,179 less than last year for a total combined of $119,369, or that 3.40% of the budget we talked about in the beginning. We have additional revenues from special education of $25,531 for a net impact on taxes of 2.67% over last year's budget. <coughs> <coughs> student enrollment ended up being level from last year. Again, we don't get those numbers from the Agency of Education until very late in the process, and it really changes each day as children move in and out of our town. Our pre-K through 12 enrollment is projected to be level over the next five years and has been relatively steady over the last decade. Here's a little table to help put in perspective the spending per equalized pupil in Berlin as compared to the other towns in our supervisory union. <coughs> you can see the expense change for our proposed budgets and the net tax impact here, looking at the five towns in our supervisory union. And as you can see, uh, Berlin is at three cents or three dollars for every one hundred thousand dollars of assessed property value. When we look at the tax impact there are four factors affecting the local tax rate. The common level of appraisal, the statewide education tax, the property yield, and the Berlin Elementary and U32 budgets. We really only have control over the fourth item. The common level of appraisal, or CLA, is an adjustment to the education tax rate to account for the gap between appraised value and actual value of the property. The 2018-2019 CLA for Berlin is 102.14%, which is down just a little bit over last year's 102.45%. This results in a very small tax increase. The statewide tax rate as of February 20th of this year um, is a series of calculations where all of the statewide education spending is put together into a pool and redistributed out to the towns. The legislature comes up with this rate and it's subject to negotiation, perhaps veto or approval of the governor. This is some information about those tax rates and this is one of the factors in determining what our local tax rate is going to be. This slide shows you a little bit about the tax rate impacts for 2019 and 2020 for Berlin and for the other four towns in the supervisory union. As you can see here, the um, residential tax rate is $3 per 100,000 of assessed value and the non-residential tax rate is $5 per 100,000 of assessed value. And it's important to note that these rates don't reflect income sensitivity adjustments, which are available to most homeowners with incomes less than $136,500 per year. This is a little more information on income sensitivity. 57% of Berlin residents receive support for their property taxes from the income sensitivity, so they won't see the same tax rate of uh, $3 per 100,000 of assessed value. 43% of the Berlin residents will pay the full tax rate. Here's a little bit more information on property tax adjustments, just showing uh, how many folks in Berlin have that income sensitivity adjusted rate and how many do not. 
In summary, the Berlin Elementary Board is proposing a budget of $3,630,287. That budget is a 3.4% increase over last year's expense budget. When you include special education revenues, this amounts to a net impact on taxes of 2.67%. Passing both the Berlin Elementary School and the U32 budgets will result in a 0.3 cent increase in the local homestead tax rate. That translates to an increase of $3 per $100,000 of assessed value. Our tax rate is projected to increase in part due to the change in the common level of appraisal and the statewide education tax formula, along with what we've chosen to spend on the local budget. We think this is a responsible budget, balancing fiscal constraint with student needs, and we ask you for your support. A public hearing will be held at the Berlin Elementary School on Monday, March 4th at 6 p.m. to provide information to be voted by an Australian ballot at town meeting. Anyone with questions can contact me, Chris Winters, through the Berlin Elementary website. You'll also see some posts on Front Porch Forum about this. If you're not registered to vote, please do. You can contact the Secretary of State's office through their website and register online. You can go to your town clerk and register there, and you can even register to vote on the same day that you come in for town meeting. Thank you for your support, and we hope to see you at the polls. Now that your appetite is Hello, everyone. Any other Thanks. questions? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Um, on the slide that showed the per pupil spending per school, there was a notable difference between the schools. And I know that there's a lot that goes into that for facility costs, special education, all that. With this forced merger, though, would you look into your crystal ball and expect that those per pupil costs are going to be flattened out equal between the schools? I'm having a really <clears throat> hard time seeing anything in my crystal ball about this merger, <laughs> given the direction things have been going, the tension that we've seen between the towns, but I think eventually we're all going to get onto the same page. But I'm, I'm not sure if that means there's going to be pressure for everybody to spend more at the higher end or pressure for everybody to spend more at the lower end. I don't know which way that pressure is going to move. Um, I, I wouldn't dare to predict which way it will go. But I, but I do think there will be more pressure for us to treat our students the same way across the district. Berlin has made certain particular decisions about how we want our school to operate. And I don't think you know one is any, any better than the other. We seem to have been in the past able to, to do well with a lower per pupil spending. I think the, the renovation bond kind of drove that up some in recent years. Um, you'll see that East Montpelier and Middlesex have chosen to spend more in their districts, and that's not just renovation bonds, but that's also staff and you know, number of um, staff per student that they choose to spend their programs they choose to put into their schools. So those individual community decisions are going to play off each other, as, as you're saying, and there's going to be pressure to be, I think, more even across the district. But I'm not sure which way that pressure is going to go. Is it going to go to the higher end or to the lower end? Thank you. Anything else on the school district warning? Then close your books, flip them over, and turn to the town warning. Page one. And as with the uh, school district, uh, we have uh, uh, candidates. If, if who, is, who here might be a candidate for the select board for a three year term? We recognize himself. I'm Brad Tao. I'm running for the uh, chair of the select board. I am running for re-election this uh, tomorrow. Thank you. And candidates, there are two uh, vacancies for one year term. I'm Florence Smith, and I'm running for a one year seat on the select board. I'm a resident here in Berlin. I've been a resident for 25 years, and I'm a good upstanding citizen. I hope for your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Justin Lawrence, I'm running for a one-year term. Um, I've been a, a born and raised, went to this school, and my children went to this school, and I'm running for the one-year term. Good. Any other candidates want to announce tonight? Article 2, shall the town appropriate 
$2,503 for necessary town expenses for the period July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2020. Uh, questions for the select board on the town budget? Silence means none. <laughs> Article 3, shall the voters of the Town of Berlin adopt the land use and development regulations, formerly zoning and subdivision regulations, filed in the Town Clerk's Office January 15, 2019. Uh, I, I assume that the Town has had public hearings on this already, so you have discussed it, but is there anyone who has questions about the pending uh, land use regulations? Speak up now, don't, don't sit on your hands. <laughs> Article 4, shall the town appropriate $267,968 to the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department for payment of necessary expenses from July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2020. Anyone here from the uh, fire department want to talk about that? Uh, John Staub, resident, um, corporate president of the fire department. Good. So there's a... Uh, Anything you would like to ask? Um, Anything unusual about the budget? Well, a um, few things that are out of our control is the communication dispatch, which went up like 7%, which doesn't sound like a whole lot, but when you're going up from 45 to over 47,000, um, that, that's a considerable amount. Um, we have outsourced our accounting now for over two years, and that comes with a cost. Um, course. Um, the, the one thing that we did put in the budget last year and we had a zero on it is our contingency plan and we're looking looking towards expenditures that are unpredict, unpredictable um, emergency funds such as that. Um, we didn't fund it last year. This year we did fund it with $5,000 from carryover of last year's budget. Um, and, and so that that is coming from our budget, but it was appropriated by the town. Um, that is something that's going to be new, and I'd like to continue that. And, you know, that would be things such as um, replacement of the roof, um, you know, the furnace, which is probably at least ten to twelve thousand dollars. It's those emergency expenditures that we can't foresee. Um, those are the only real changes in the budget this year. Any questions for John or about the budget for the school district or for the fire department? Okay, thank you. Uh, five, shall the town appropriate $30,402 to the Kellogg Covered Library? Sir. Good evening, I'm Tom McCone uh, from the Kellogg Covered Library. I live in Montpelier, so thanks for letting me speak tonight. The uh, Kellogg Hubbard Library is an independent, non-profit organization. It serves Berlin, Callis, East Montpelier, Middlesex, Montpelier, and Worcester. Um, and it's uh, important to remind people it's not a municipal library. So we uh, depend on the six communities that we serve for 52% of our uh, revenue, and that we could not manage without that. Um, we are very grateful to the taxpayers of Berlin for their uh, generous support. And we're again asking for, as Paul was saying, $30,402, the same amount that um, Berlin voters approved uh, last year. So we're not looking for any increase. That is 3.3% uh, of the cost of running the library. And the rate is also considerably lower the per capita rate is about one-third of what the statewide average is for municipal support of local libraries. So we think it's a, um, a good deal we're offering. We get a, uh, last year, Berlin residents borrowed almost 10,000 items from the library. Uh, good old-fashioned books are still the most popular thing about the library. We have uh, e-books and e-audio books. And uh, those have grown in, in use over the years, but they, they still are very small. Uh, their use is still very small compared with use of, um, of books. We have a collection of about 67,000 books and the, the materials. So 
Um, I could talk all night, but I know you don't want that, and uh, I'm glad to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions from Tom? Sir. Yes. Yeah. Um, do you uh, make an effort to sign up, uh, you know, children for library cards in the school, elementary school, so they have them? And we actually come here at least once a year, and uh, some years we've been here twice, and come <coughs> to some evening event, and uh, we can bring this. Using the internet, we can bring a, a device where we can do library cards on the spot and people can leave with their library cards. So we'll keep doing that. The other thing we also added this past year is the, uh, the, the Give a Book, Take a Book at the Berlin Mall, which has been really popular. It's right outside of uh, Planet Fitness. So there's a, a little corner that the mall gave us and uh, we have some shelves there. We bring free books. People can, it, the, the main thing is to get books into people's hands so people can take books. Um, it is give a book, take a book. Some people give a book too, and that's, that's great. But um, we, we keep, keep those shelves stocked. And also, um, the mall has provided us with furniture there so people can sit and read. Um, so that's something new in the past year. So, so you actually make an effort of coming into the school and letting the children sign up so I have a, have a library card? Um, we have done that, and I, I don't know how recently we've done that. How many? How many uh, we invite the we invite the school to come to the library also. So. Uh, how many how many Berlin residents are signed up at the Kellogg now? Do you have that? We have 521 Berlin residents who have library cards who have active library cards. I see. Active is used in the last two years. In the last or? two years. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You're retiring. Yeah, I'm, I'm retiring June 30th. So they're doing a search now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Good day. Article 6, shall the town appropriate $10,920 to the Green Mountain Transit? Anyone here from Green Mountain Transit? If not, your questions will probably go unanswered. 7, shall the town appropriate $12,500 to the Montpelier Senior Activity Center? Anyone to speak on this? Eight, shall the town appropriate $6,450 to Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice? I'm going to keep going until you stop to say you want to talk about some of these. Uh, shall the town appropriate $3,000 to the Central Vermont Council on Aging? Shall the town appropriate $2,000 to the Washington County Mental Health? They're not here, but they did leave an information sheet if anybody's interested in some details. Good. And most of these, I think, have reports in the town report as well. If they were funded last year, yes. Uh, shall the town appropriate $1,200 to the Central Vermont Adult Basic Education? Shall the town appropriate $1,000 to the Vermont Center for Independent Living? Shall the town appropriate $1,000 to the Central Vermont Memorial Civic Center? Shall the town appropriate $975 to Circle? Uh, shall the town appropriate $800 to the Family Center of Washington County? Shall the town appropriate $700 to Capstone Community Action? Shall the town appropriate $500 to the People's Health and Wellness Clinic? Shall the town appropriate $500 to the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired? Shall the town appropriate $500 to the Washington County Youth Services Bureau? Shall the town appropriate $500 to the Sexual Assault Crisis Team of Washington County? Shall the town appropriate $500 to Washington County Diversion? Shall the town appropriate $400 to Community Harvest of Central Vermont? Stop, I will say something. Ah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Just to break it up a little bit. There you know. <laughs> um, some of you have probably heard this before. Um, I'm Allison Levin from Community Harvest of Central Vermont. I'm also a Berlin resident here. 
Um, I just wanted to share a little bit about the organization if you weren't familiar, um, in case you hadn't read the information in your booklet. Um, our mission is to bring the community together through gleaning to recover surplus food from local area farms to feed those in the community with limited access to fresh local food and in the process bring our community um, together to gain a greater awareness and appreciation for the local food system, healthy eating, and waste reduction. Uh, we work with volunteers um, to use the nutritious food that's already being grown here in our community um, to feed the otherwise, that would otherwise be going to waste to feed people um, in need. Um, I, or, I founded the organization in 2014, and since then we've been able to um, donate over 175,000 pounds of food. Um, that would translate into about 527,000 servings that would have otherwise gone to waste. Um, this is donated to food shelves, senior meal programs, early childhood and after school programs. Um, also students here in Berlin um, benefit from the program um, and other programs um, in the community, uh, mostly in Washington County. Um, we're asking for a small amount from all the towns that we serve throughout the county um, to help cover the, the small portion of the costs of us delivering the food to all the organizations um, throughout the community. Um, we donate to all of the sites that we bring the food to. Um, all of our gleaning recovery work is done with two to three hundred volunteers each season um, to, to glean the food that we recover. Um, we want to ask for your support again this year to continue the gleaning work that we're doing to reduce waste and feed hungry people. Um, this is the same amount, the $400 that we asked for last year. Um, and this food goes to about 9,000 people here in Washington County, um, all that we've been able to glean. They're just in 2018, we were able to donate 149,000 servings um, of food, which was our biggest year ever. Um, and we hope to be able to continue doing that. We, we donate that food to about 20 different sites. Um, throughout the county. Um, Berlin residents um, benefit from the program and have for the last five years um, through our partnerships with area food shelves and senior meal programs and all of the surrounding towns that serve Meals on Wheels and other programs to Berlin residents. We also partner with the Berlin Elementary School and the Farm to School program to engage students and provide them hands opportunities to get out and glean, to eat healthy food and learn about um, um, food production and also healthy eating um, in the classroom. And also last year we were able to get um, about 35, uh, 65 of those students, parents and teachers to come out and glean with us um, at one of the farms, the orchard that we glean. And we also partner with two farms in Berlin, um, Dog River Farm and Rogers Farms to cover some of their surplus food that they want to provide to community members that they're not able to sell. Um, we're a 501c3 nonprofit, and um, again, thank you for your past support, and we hope you'll vote for us tomorrow at town meeting. Thank you. Uh, questions? Yeah, any more questions? Thank you for your service. Well, thank you. <clears throat> and uh, let's see, uh, shall the town appropriate $300 to the good beginnings of Central Vermont? And shall the town appropriate $300 to Home Share Now, Inc.? Well, thanks for coming. We have a couple other people who are part of the funding request, but Chris from Emergency Services and Tim from the Capital Grange. That would you like to? All right, let's have start with Chris. Sorry. <laughs> so, hi, I'm Chris from Barrytown EMS. I'm not a resident, so thank you for allowing me to, to speak with you all. Um, so. I usually ramble for a few minutes. So I tried to write some things down uh, this year. So just some things that I thought were good to bring up is we, we just were approved for our last two years of your contract with your town. So it's good we don't have to worry about that for two more years. Um, our call volume is continually increased. So this past year we had a 3%, 3.7% increase in calls, about 7% over the last three years. So our call volume continues to rise, uh, which has some positives, some negatives, and things we're, we're concerned about. Um, we uh, one of the interesting things I did look up is in any given in any given year we have 989 ambulances scheduled to be on the road every single day, and estimated we put about 978 of those ambulances on the road last year. 99 per, a little over 99 percent of those with a paramedic on the truck. 
Um, and I would challenge any other service in the state of Vermont to compete with that. Nobody near here competes with that. Nobody else in the state competes with that. It's a phenomenal benefit that you get um, with our scheduled ambulances. By all means, if we have a fourth or fifth truck on the road, you might not have that paramedic, um, but having the highest level of care on, on all of our primary trucks is a, is a great feat, uh, something we're really proud of. Uh, the, the last piece I'd like to bring up is that this past year we added $16,000 of our budget was geared towards improving some things on our ambulance, um, putting some high level medical equipment. Uh, we purchased a ventilator to go up to three ventilators. Uh, we include some video laryngoscopes, so being able to do some high level procedures um, with newer technologies, which is safer and more uh, efficient. Uh, we added uh, some new radios and iPads so we can do some documentation. So that was all really good stuff. Um, the, the concerns and things we're thinking about for the future is that we're looking at, uh, while our call volume is increasing, the number of patients we transport to the hospital is actually decreasing. Uh, we, we increased our non-transport calls from about 17% to 22% uh, last year which is great that we're able to show up and help people um, and get them to where they need to be and then leave them where they are. The negative is that EMS since its inception in the mid 60s um, has always been based on miles transported a patient. We have no funding um, from insurances or other billing sources when it comes to patients we don't transport. So that is a concern going forward that we always worry about. Um, that's pretty much the the Oh, actually, I'll, give you one. I'll end with a positive. Um, I looked up the number of times we turn over calls. Um, ambulance services like fire departments, police departments, sometimes get two or three calls at a time. You have to sometimes turn those over. And last year, we went to uh, counting transfers out of the hospital. We went to 2,165 calls last year in the town of Berlin. We were called for approximately 2,170 calls. So we, we made it to 99 some odd percent of the calls when we're asked to come to your town, um, which again is something I would challenge any other service in this area or in the state to, to meet that feat. So that's all I got for you for today. Questions for Chris? I have one. How many of those calls are just Berlin, not the hospital? Uh, the, I have that on my flip sheets. I did actually look that up. There we go. Uh, let's see. The actual 9-1 calls in Berlin last year was uh, approximately 480 calls. That also that doesn't include the nursing homes in Berlin. That that's just private residences in Berlin. Mm -hmm. Good. Anything else for Chris? Mm -hmm. yes. I just have to acknowledge the proficiency and the incredible. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. And hello. I'm Tim Swartz. I'm the president of the Capital City Grange. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, we are located in Berlin over on Route 12, as probably all of you know. You've probably seen our sign. Um, and I'm not here to ask for any money, but to thank you for the uh, tax exemption which we were given in March of 2016 at the, the town meeting at that time. And I uh, just wanted to come back and let you know that we are working hard on all the projects we had going then and more. Um, not having to deal with the property taxes has allowed us to uh, not ask for fundraising from groups that use the Grange as we used to. And in fact, we've been able to invest money in the Grange instead of losing money every year, which is what we were doing. Uh, this last year, for example, uh, we uh, installed a on-demand water heater instead of the storage water heater, so we're saving money and electricity. We did a lot of landscaping around our uh, main entrance. You can see the boulders that we uh, placed so that the plantings would be protected from the snow plow. And that's certainly been very appropriate this year, which has been quite snowing. Uh, we've got lots of things going on uh, within the, the Grange itself and uh, the people that rent from us. Among the things in the Grange, we've, we 
I've got pictures of a baking contest and an Indian cooking workshop we had, uh, holiday sing-along, holiday boxes we donated to through Washington County uh, Head Start. And there's all sorts of classes, dances, all sorts of things going on at Grange Hall. Uh, we uh, are an all-volunteer organization and we welcome people to come and join us. And uh, we offer free rentals for Berlin organizations and individuals. At the time that we asked for the exemption, we said that we wanted to give at least two rentals a month on average to uh, Berlin organizations. And uh, having checked the figures, uh, we've uh, had 76 rentals in the three years since, so we're uh, reaching and slightly exceeding our goal. But we have room for more people to uh, use the hall, so we'd like everyone to spread the word. And uh, I have some cards here from with information about uh, how to contact our rental agent, and we'll be happy to help you use the, the hall, assuming that it's not already rented for one of the other things that's going on, of course. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, that's right, yes, the Streisbergs are right. <laughs> Never forget the pot potluck. We do have a potluck dinner on the first Saturday of every month following our, our monthly Grange meeting uh, at 6 o'clock, and it's a chance for people to uh, sit down and uh, enjoy a lot of really good food. We've had some, some really great spreads recently. When 30 or, I don't know, 25 or 30 people, would you say, last, last time, last couple of months. Anything else? I'm going to leave this here, and hopefully it can stay up so that people that are coming to vote tomorrow can see it also. Thank you, Tim. Uh, that's the agenda for tonight. Tomorrow at 10 o'clock, we start with a school district meeting. And uh, see you there. Thank you. Thank you.